Welcome to Unity of Ukaipa. I am Reverend Deanna, and I've had something on my mind the last few days, although this pops into my head um, periodically because I find it fascinating. But over the last week especially, I have been thinking about I've been thinking about the age of Aquarius, why I believe we're already in the age of Aquarius. I have been also thinking about the shadow and the grace of the solar plexus. The shadow is entitlement and the grace is understanding. Right now, I think, if, if we're being triggered by any part of our shadow, it's the shadow of the solar plexus, and I will explain that in a couple minutes, okay? But first I wanna share why I believe we are in the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius is about global living. It is about humanitarian living. It's about the whole. It's about the understanding that what is in the one is in the all. And so we moved into this age, I believe, um, when Oppenheimer split the atom. Okay, I heard Carolyn Mace was talking about this and it was just like, boom, really? Okay. But Oppenheimer split the atom and then what happened was all of a sudden we could cause destruction on a mass level, on a global level level. We could cause destruction with one bomb, with one bomb. Now, because we pushed the limits of destruction so far, farther out than they have ever been pushed out before, we also had to be able to push its opposite out farther than we have ever pushed that out before. The opposite of global mass destruction is global mass love. It's unification. It's unity. It is compassion and love for the global village. So we literally, like, like that, we, we, there was a seed planted, okay? Or there was a, if you look at it, a seed was fertilized and it started growing. And then ever since then, as we, like, as we moved into the 60s and there became this idea of individuality, individuation. We moved into the 70s, and then all of a sudden there are more opportunities for growth, more opportunities for expressing ourselves. Right now, my kids have all these opportunities for how they could live their life and express their joys, way more than my, than my grandmother had available to her. And so it's just, we have more opportunities for expressing what we love and our gifts, the gifts we have to bring, than ever before. So we are in the age of Aquarius. We are also more energetic beings than we were a hundred years ago. We're more energetic. Okay, we, we are modulating energy and manifestation quicker than we ever have before. But we also have a mental tendency and it is our mental tendency from which we create from which we are modulating this energy, from which we are sending out the energy to manifest our next experience. And our mental tendency is how we think when we don't think about how we're thinking. We create a habitual pattern of behavior. This is why someone with victim consciousness tends to always have victim consciousness. And the things that happen in their life, no matter what, they tend to, to react to those situations through victim consciousness. Okay, so this is our mental tendency. It's how we behave and react in the world without thinking about it. But see, now we are modulating energy faster than ever, faster than we ever have. So we have a mental tendency. Now, right now, in the midst of this pandemic, we are operating a lot in our solar plexus. Now our solar plexus is, if we're in our shadow, this is where entitlement is. And a lot of entitlement issues happened, like we, we they were triggered as soon as the um, COVID-19 was announced. And how that might have looked at, like at the beginning of the year when we started reading about it on social media was, oh well that's in another country, there's nothing to worry about here. We wouldn't get anything like that here in the US. No, not here. We've lived in a bubble of safety for all these years. Nothing ever happens here. 
So that is actually a form of entitlement. Then we saw recently at the grocery stores, <laughs> people who are hoarding items. And so I remember somebody telling me just a couple, just like a week ago, that they got in line outside of a grocery store because they needed toilet paper. And like the first 10 people in the store got all the toilet paper. They got all of it. She said there were people in, that had like five packs of it in their grocery cart. Okay, so this is entitlement. Now I'm hearing there are people who are trying to return to stores where they purchased hordes of toilet paper. They're expecting the store to refund them now. I was like, well, I didn't need it. <laughs> and they're not getting their refunds. <laughs> so this is the energetic quality then, or our, our, our shadow of entitlement. If we are acting with entitlement and we don't realize we're doing it, it's a, it's a mental tendency. And this is the energy we're sending out into the next experience we're getting ready to create. This is a very limiting energetic quality to work from because when we are entitled, we are in expectation that something out here is gonna take care of things for us. Something out here, okay, will make our life okay. We're not a participator, we're a bystander when we are operating out of the energetic quality of entitlement. Okay, how this could also look is, well, there's a pandemic going on and so many people can't work and well, I had to stay home for a week, so I'm just gonna skip my, my electric bill for another month. Okay, that's entitlement. Now it's one thing if you are literally not getting paid and you have to stay home and you're down to your last 20 bucks, okay, then that's one thing. But to still have your bank account looking like normal and decide you're not gonna pay your electric bill, that's entitlement. So if we're operating out of entitlement, we are putting that into our next experience. That's the seed for the next experience. That is the mold for the next experience. Now the grace of the solar plexus is understanding and it's what helps us to honor our gifts. It is what helps us to honor the power that works through us for us as us. It, it allows us to honor that we are the activity of spirit in this world, right? We are, we are literally the activity of spirit in this world. We are a, we're a physical expression of spirit in this world. And we came into this life experience with a set of gifts that we planned on sharing with this world, okay, with our, within our life, within our community, okay, within this experience. We brought these gifts in. It is actually a form of entitlement to sit on these gifts and not do anything with them, okay, to say, well, I'm just waiting for somebody out here to make it work out for me. You know, okay, sure, I want to get into this whatever business, but this out here needs to fall into place at first. And, well, somebody needs to do this work for me so I can get moving on. I need somebody to write in and, and want to be a supporter in this. Or if the universe wants me to do this, then it'll make it happen. Okay, that's all entitlement. Right there, that is all entitlement. That's being a bystander in your own life instead of a participant. Okay, we didn't come here to be a bystander. Bystanders don't do anything. Okay, our soul created a physical body so it could work, so it could be expressed into our lives. Our soul wants activity. Our soul wants expansion. This is the nature of the soul. This is the nature of spirit. This is the nature of love. Big cosmic love, a force that sweep is irresistible, has the urge, it seeks. It seeks to do this, it has the urge to do this, to create more of itself through its creations. So right now, you are its creation. It is seeking to expand the good through you, through you, for you, as you. Don't sit on that. This is not the time to be sitting on that. This is not the time. You were divinely designed to allow the expansion of the good through you, for you, as you. To allow the expansion of this good into your life and into the lives of those around you. You were designed for this. You were not designed to be a bystander and sit in your house 
waiting for things to get better so you could go back to normal. There's no normal. That normal is gone. We have to create a whole brand new normal. I liken this to the experience of somebody captured you in their spaceship, flew you to another planet, and dropped you off in a neighborhood that you, where you've never been before, an alien neighborhood, and they flew away, and that's where you are right now. We are at the beginning of a journey we have never taken before. We are in uncharted territory. Now your soul, your soul has a map for all this. And the map unfolds for you one step at a time as you honor those gifts and allow them to unfold through you one moment at a time. It's what you're here for. It is what you are here for. It is what you are here for. Okay. I love you. You can do this because it is what you are designed to do.